Okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna shift gears and we're gonna get into the effortful part of uh, this presentation, this talk. This, this, this requires putting in the work, right? This isn't, this isn't as simple as taking a pill. Um, but at the very least, I think that, you know, taking the pill is, is, is easier for a lot of people. Um, but then there's the, of course, the people that want to go the step further and they're willing to put in the effort. So let's talk about that. Um, we're going to talk about why I'm convinced that vigorous exercise is the most powerful longevity drug that you're going to get. More than metformin, more than rapamycin, more than any of those things. If you could pill up what you can do with vigorous exercise, then I think that is like right now what the best longevity drug we have for delaying the aging process and improving health span and in improving lifespan. So when I say vigorous exercise, what do I mean? Um, generally speaking, of course, there, there's, there's a sliding scale here because you can take someone who's completely sedentary and never really done any aerobic exercise. Vigorous exercise for them is going to be probably more what light to moderate exercise is for people that are physically active. But generally speaking, once you kind of adapt and get you know, used to phys being physically active, vigorous exercise is about getting to 80% your max heart rate or estimated max heart rate. Um, that's, that's really what I'm talking about, 75 to 80% of your, your, your maximum heart rate. So cardiorespiratory fitness this is one of the best biomarkers for longevity, in my opinion. Um, so cardiorespiratory fitness is measured empirically by VO2 max. So that's the maximal amount of oxygen that you can take up during maximal exercise. So when I use VO2 max, I'll, you know, sometimes these are like interchangeable cardiorespiratory fitness, VO2 max. I kind of use them interchangeably in this, in this talk. Um, but VO2 max is just directly measuring cardiorespiratory fitness. So cardiorespiratory fitness is associated with improved longevity. It does improve longevity. Um, and, and the biggest improvements you're gonna get is if you're going from low normal, so for your age group, for your, for your gender, if you're low normal and going anywhere above that is, is where you get the biggest bang for your buck. So people that have a low normal VO2 max, if they just go up to a, um, if they're below, sorry, if they're below um, normal and they go up to just low normal, they get about a 2.1 increased life expectancy. If they're below normal and they go up to high normal, they get almost a three-year increased life expectancy. And then if they go from below normal to the upper amount of normal, so this is the top 5% of the population, this is more like you're getting into the elite athlete level, that's associated with almost a five-year increase in life expectancy. Um, so just to give you some perspective here, about half of the U.S. population is they have a low normal cardiorespiratory fitness and the other half has about a high normal uh, cardiorespiratory fitness. So it, again, it just it, mostly having to do with being physically active or not being physically active. And on average, um, for every unit increase in VO2 max, it's, a, it's associated with a 45 day increase in life expectancy. And there was a really important study published in JAMA back in 2018 um, that I'd just like to mention because it, it kind of established that there was no upper limit to the mortality reduction of having a high cardiorespiratory fitness. I mean, obviously within human, normal human life expectancy ranges, right? So um, people that were in the, the bottom 25% of uh, cardiorespiratory fitness or their VO2 max. And also I like these studies because they're measuring something empirically. I'm talking about VO2 max, right? This is a fitness test that's done, it's measured, it's empirical, versus a lot of studies and conflicting data out there where you have these questionnaires. How physically active are you? you know, and you, so you think about your last week or, or month, and then that's like you extrapolate it out and you go, okay, well, based on this last week, this is how physically active we think this person is over the, you know, their, their lifetime or whatever. And I just, it's not a very, you know, it, it's all we have in some respects, but um, if, you can, if you can measure something empirically, it's gonna really help clear up a lot of the confounding and a lot of the, um, you know, conflicting data that you see out there. So I really like studies that measure VO2 max because it's something that's actual, actually empirical rather than going off a questionnaire, right? With, that's, those have all sorts of problems. So going from the low um, bottom 25% of VO2 max up to the elite level, so you're talking about the top 2.3%. I mean, this, these are the elite athletes. 
that's associated with an 80% reduction in all-cause mortality. So comparing those two groups, people in the low 25% group versus the, like, the elite level. Um, but even going from the high cardiorespiratory fitness, so this, uh, this is a top 25% of the population. They're good. I mean, these, these are people that are, they're committed exercisers. They're really, they're physically active. They, if they go up to the elite level, um, they, they get a, you know, even 20% more reduction in all-cause mortality. So if you compare the elite to the high cardiorespiratory fitness, um, you're, 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 still, you're still getting a 20% lower all-cause mortality by just moving up to that elite level. Um, and what was really interesting about this study was that being in that low 25% group, that the, you know, they're, they're in the, the bottom 25% for VO2 max, that was comparable to a either same risk or greater risk than for mortality, early mortality, as type 2 diabetes, as smoking, and as um, having heart disease. So again, putting that into perspective, you know, we all think about these diseases and how they're, you know, they're, um, you know, increasing our early mortality risk, but like just not having a good cardiorespiratory fitness can do the same thing. So how do you improve your VO2 max? How do you improve your cardiorespiratory fitness? Well, any exercise, any aerobic exercise is, is obviously going to be good for um, small changes in cardiorespiratory fitness. But in particular, there have been meta-analysis that have found that vigorous intensity exercise, as I mentioned, and particularly high intensity interval training, which we're going to talk about. So this is where you're doing sort of short bursts of, you know, very vigorous exercise. You're at least at 80% max heart rate, sometimes going even above that. And then, and then having rest periods and you're doing those intervals. Um, and why that's important is because there've been some studies that have found that even people that are meeting the guidelines for moderate aerobic exercise, so they're doing two and a half hours of moderate intensity aerobic exercise per week, do not, about 40% of those people do not respond. In other words, they do not get VO2 max improvements. They are not improving their cardiorespiratory fitness by doing two and a half hours of moderate intensity exercise every week. Um, and it's not really known why exactly there's these non-responder effect, but that's a large percent of the population. Um, however, when those people do more of a high intensity interval training workout, they, they do more vigorous exercise and they start to respond and improve their VO2 max. And it's thought because, you know, VO2 max, cardiorespiratory fitness, to get those changes, to get those improvements, you really have to increase cardiac output. Um, so the stronger the signal, the, strong, the, the more intense the signal, the adaptations are greater. So your body responds by improving the delivery of oxygen to your tissues, right? So that's essentially what um, you're wanting to improve your cardiorespiratory fitness. And so that's, it's kind of thought why vigorous intensity and particularly high intensity interval training is so important for improving cardiorespiratory fitness. Um, and, the, and one of the, it, I, there's been several studies looking at this. And uh, for example, Dr. Martin Gabala out of McMaster University over in Ontario, Canada, has done a lot of studies looking at different high intensity interval training protocols. And it really seems if you're really wanting to improve that cardiorespiratory fitness, that you have to do longer intervals. So three to five minute intervals of just the maximum intensity that you can maintain for that three to five minutes. And so a really good um, and well studied, a lot of evidence on the Norwegian four by four protocol. So this is four minutes of the highest intensity that you can do, and then it's three minutes of recovery. So you're really going down to like light, light exercise. You want your heart rate to go down. You want to sort of really give yourself some rest so that you can do it again. So you repeat this four times. That's why it's called four by four. And this is one of the best protocols for improving VO2 max. Um, if you don't want to go into a lab to get your VO2 max measured or you don't have access to it for whatever reason, um, one of the, the best evidence-based ways of measuring VO2 max um, at home, so to speak, not necessarily home, is what's called the 12-minute run test or walk test, depending on your fitness level. Uh, essentially, you need uh, some sort of, you know, wearable device that can track your, your distance. So Apple Watch, your Fitbit, whatever. And you need, to, you need to have like a flat surface that you can run on. So like a track field. And you want to run for 12 minutes or walk, depending on your fitness level, the maximum intensity that you can maintain for that 12 minutes. And, you want, and that basically your distance is going to be covered 
And then you look up this equation and it converts, you know, your VO2 max based on that distance. And the reason you don't want hills and stuff is because that'll make you run, um, you know, the, the distance will be less. So you want to make sure you're giving yourself a flat surface so that you actually are more accurate in terming what your distance is during that 12 minute run test.